Galloway's How to Find Out About RNIB Benefits and Concessions. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on our Wow Wednesday session at two o'clock. Um, we are very lucky to be joined this afternoon by some of RNIB's um, benefits experts. We've got Emily and Mark joining us today, and they'll be talking to you about the different benefits and concessions that are available to people with sight loss. So first of all, I'm going to pass over to Emily and hand the reins over to you, Emily. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Um, so I am a sight loss advisor at RNIB and we specialise in lots of different areas of support for people with sight loss. Benefits and the welfare system is one of them. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a brief overview of some of the benefits that are available for people with sight loss. I'm not going to be able to go, in, go into too much detail about them all because a lot of them are quite complex and a lot of the benefit system is very individual. So I'm going to give an overview of the current benefits that are available and the, the benefit figures that I mentioned are all relevant to today, which 21st of July, 2021. Um, the government do make changes to the benefit system and they do sometimes change the figures. So just be aware of that if you're listening to this at a later date. If you would like any specific advice about your own situation and your own benefits, or you ever want to have a benefits check to make sure you're not missing out on any benefits that you could be eligible for, you can always contact the RNIB advice service. And we have advisors that will be able to do a confidential benefits check for you. And I'll give you the details about how you contact RNIB at the end. So the benefits I'm going to speak about are mainly benefits related to England and Wales. There are slightly different rules around some of the benefits in Scotland and Northern Ireland. And I'm going to be talking about benefits for adults. So I'm not going to talk about DLA, Disability Living Allowance, which is now a benefit that, that's only available for new claimants under 16. So I'm just going to stick to the, the benefits that are available for adults. And two main categories. The first one is known as means tested benefits. And that means that it's it, the amount of benefit or your eligibility for benefits depends upon the amount of income you have and also the amount of savings will have an effect on them. And then there are non means tested benefits, which are not related to income or savings. It's all about your circumstances. So first of all, two means tested benefits, one of them for working age and one of them for people of state pension age. Universal credit is the working age benefit. So anyone who is of working age and who might be on a lower income or might have children or might have limited capability for work, or might be looking for work at the minute, but you're not, not working, or like I said, on a low income or renting, they, if they are struggling, would, would claim for universal credit. And universal credit is a fairly new benefit still for, for claimants. It's replaced a number of benefits known as legacy. And they were income support, income job seekers allowance, income related employment support allowance, child tax credits, working tax credits and housing benefit. So anyone wanting to make a new claim for any of those benefits can no longer do so and they would need to make a claim for universal credit. Universal credit and the equivalent, which is the pension credit for state pension age, they're a benefit that the government suggests people should have a certain amount of money to live on every week. And if you don't have that amount of money, they will top it up. And that's what these benefits are. They top up on, on top of your basic income. So for somebody 
with sight loss, we often find that they, they can try and claim additional amount within universal credit because if they have limited capability for work related activity, they can undergo an assessment. And if they are awarded it, they would receive an extra £343.63 pence a month. That's on top of the basic rate, which for a single person over 25, it's £324, or it will be £324 in October. At the minute, the government is still giving people an extra £20 a week because of the COVID situation. So there are some, some extra amounts that potentially you could receive under universal credit, but you would need to go through a capability for work assessment. And we can support people with that at our NIB advice line. And we can make sure that people um, have all the, the relevant amounts calculated within their universal credit claims. So that's the working age. The state pension age equivalent to that, which is the top up for people, is called pension credit. And for new claimants, uh, claiming pension credit now there is there's only a guaranteed pension credit some people who might have been on pension credit for a while or people that um, were receiving it and then it stopped and then you know making a new claim they might be able to get something called savings credit so these are elements within pension credit guaranteed pension credit says that for any individual over state pension age should have 173 pounds 75 pence a week if they're a single person living on their own that's the basic amount again there are additions that can be added into pension credit related to disability so if you have attendance allowance or disability living allowance care component or personal independence payment, these are benefits I'm going to mention to you later on. And you live on your own and no one gets care as allowance for looking after you um, or you don't live alone, but you live with another person who is either registered blind or has a has a disability benefit themselves, then you, you would be able to claim an, this additional severe disability element within your pension credit payment. And that's an extra £67.30 for a single person a week. Again, with pension credit, we can do calculations and work out whether you're eligible for pension credit. Unlike universal credit, pension credit is on its own. It doesn't include your housing benefit. So you can still be eligible in addition to pension credit, maybe you know, some, some help towards your rent. And we can give you some advice about that and calculate that based on your current um, situation. So they are the two main means-tested benefits. The non-means-tested benefits, there is something called new style employment support allowance now i mentioned to you earlier on that employment support allowance income related is now part of universal credit new style employment support allowance is slightly different and it's based upon your national insurance history so if you are of working age and you're no longer able to work due to sickness or disability, and but you have been working and you've paid enough national insurance contributions within the last two to three years, then you can claim new style employment support allowance. Initially, that would give you £74.35 a week, which is the assessment rate. During the assessment phase, you'll be found to either have, again, similar to what I mentioned earlier on, limited capability for work, or you'll be found to be in the support group, which means limited capability for work-related activity. What that latter 
um, component means is that you're not able to work or look for work. And if you were awarded the, the support group, the limited capability for work related activity, then you do receive an additional amount within your payments. And the assessment for that is an application form. And usually for most people, a face-to-face -face assessment for some that's taking place over the telephone because of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and the DWP will make their decisions based on the application form and the assessment, medical reports of whether you are found to be in one or the other category or not at all. Um, now for anybody who's registered sight impaired or severely sight impaired, we, we would expect them to at least be recognized as having a limited capability for work. Um, then the other non-means tested benefits I'm going to speak about are ones that are not relevant to national insurance history or anything to do with your income or your savings. It's, they're all related to the extra help that you might need because of a health condition or disability. And you might have heard of these. There's, there's two that I'm going to speak about. The first one is personal independence payment. And that's a benefit for people who are of working age. Again, so you're over 16, under state pension age. And if you need some extra help with everyday tasks um, because of a physical or mental condition, and you have needed help for at least three months, and be expected to need help for another nine months then it and you're not already in receipt of any other benefits like disability living allowance then we would advise people and support people to claim personal independence payment PIP is, ba is not based on your condition so there's no automatic eligibility it can be helpful to have information like a certificate of visual impairment or details about medical conditions, but there's no automatic eligibility. You do need to apply for personal independence payment. And you would do that by first of all, contacting the DWP, who would then send out an application form. And they also, similar to the the other benefit I mentioned earlier on ESA, you would need to, to attend a face-to-face -face assessment. Again, some, some, in some areas, it's still telephone assessments, but the, the DWP have started to return to using face-to-face -face medical assessments. So based upon the application form, any medical evidence that you send with the form and following the assessment, a DWP caseworker would then decide whether you met the criteria for personal independence payment. There are 11, sorry, just counting them then, there are 11 daily living um, elements that they use to, to decide um, whether you're eligible and there's two mobility. So they would, base their decisions on a point system and you can score points within different elements. The 11 daily living elements are preparing and cooking food, eating and drinking, managing your treatments, washing and bathing, managing toilet needs and incontinence, dressing and undressing, communicating with other people, reading and understanding written information, mixing with others, and making decisions about money. There's quite a few in there that we find that people with sight loss can score points within because they either need to use an aid or an appliance or they need help from another person. 
and it's the need for help from another person you don't necessarily have to have somebody living with you or helping you all the time it's the need for it so preparing and cooking foods often people need to use things like liquid level indicators or their magnifier to check um, cooking instructions or they might need some help from another person to make sure that they're safe moving around in the kitchen um, eating and drinking you might need to use a, a plate a bowl instead of a plate you know that that's counted as an aid it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's specific to disability it could just be something that you need to use that's different to enable you to carry out the task um, I won't go through them all with examples because there's quite a few there and we'll be here all afternoon so um but again, you know, these, these are things that we will talk to people about their individual situations and we'll be able to assess whether we feel like, you know, what, what amount of points they should, should be awarded for their PIP. I'll just mention quickly before I go on to the, the standard enhanced rate PIP rates, the two mobility elements. So there's planning a journey and following a route or there's moving around. So they're the two elements that come under the mobility section where you can score points within one or both. Somebody who has sight loss, if they use a mobility aid, whenever they are out and about, so in a familiar area and an unfamiliar area, then you would expect them or we would expect them to score the maximum amount of points like that the enhanced rate or if they're not able to leave the home or move around in a familiar area without the help of another person a mobility aid means a long cane a guide cane uh, or a guide dog um, or maybe like a walking aid that you need to use because because of uh, physical problems as well. So lots of people can score within the mobility element based upon, based upon that really, that they're using a mobility aid or they need help from another person to move around outdoors. And the standard rate mobility, so the lower rate mobility, is if you need help in an unfamiliar area. So in your local area, maybe you can get around independently but if you travel outside of that area, you would need to use a mobility aid or the help of another person. Um, so the rates, daily living component rate, you can either be awarded the standard or the enhanced. So the standard rate per week is £60 a week and the enhanced rate is £89.60. And the mobility is also at a standard or enhanced rate. And the standard rate is £23.70 and the enhanced rate is £62.55. One final thing just worth noting under personal independence payment that as well as a fairly new benefit, it has been around for a while now, but it's replaced a benefit called disability living allowance. So for lots of people, that are on disability living allowance. They might be still in receipt of that at the moment, but they will be contacted at some point about claiming personal independence payment. Not everybody. So there are some, some exceptions to that, that rule depending upon age. So if you are in receipt of disability living allowance and you want to check to see whether you will need to claim personal independence payment, then we can work that out for you. Okay, so the final non-means tested benefit that I was going to mention to you was attendance allowance. And that is for, for the equivalent um, of personal independence payment. It's, a, it's an instead of. So if you were to make a new claim for a disability benefit, but you'd already reached state pension age, then you wouldn't be able to claim PIP, personal independence payments, you would have to claim attendance allowance. So that's if you're not already on receipt of any other benefits, disability benefits. 
so new claimants for attendance allowance, they need to have had a, either the need for care or supervision for six months before they can make their claim. So for some people with sight, sight loss, they might have been registered severely sight impaired or sight impaired, but actually they've had their sight condition for quite a while. So you don't have to necessarily make your claim after six months after your registration. You can make your claim six months after the need for care or supervision. So that might have started, you know, a while before your registration came through. The need for care and supervision is very much the need for somebody who lives on their own, who doesn't have any help from anybody to look after them, can still have a successful claim for attendance allowance because it's look at, looking at the need for help. And the way they assess that need for help is considering whether um, within your personal care, so looking after yourself, whether you have difficulties with doing the tasks, um, whether you experience any pain, um, whether things take you a lot longer to do now than they used to. And a good way to think about that is to think about the comparison. So how are you now compared to how you were before you had the sight loss? Um, does it take you a lot longer to do things? Do you, do you make mistakes um, when moving around? Do you have any accidents moving around indoors? Attendance allowance doesn't look at outdoors. It doesn't look at your mobility, unfortunately. So it only looks at your need for help in, inside. But that doesn't necessarily mean inside your own home. It just means indoors. So you might feel that you're fine with moving around your own house because you know where everything is, but you're not okay to move around within other environments like the supermarket or within a restaurant. So thinking about being indoors, you know, it's not just in your own house. Um, two levels of attendance allowance. The lower level is awarded to people who need help during the day or the night and the higher rate is awarded to people who need help with both during the day and at night time. There are some some other rules around that for, for certain people, um, some exceptions to the rules, sorry, um, for some people in certain situations. So again, if, if you want to clarify your own uh, benefit award, then that's something that we can double check to make sure that you don't come under any of the other special rules. So there we go. So they, they were the main benefits that I was going to talk to you about today. And obviously I'm open to questions. I Fantastic. I overloaded Thank you, you too much. <laughs> no, it was really helpful. It was really, really good to have that clarity. It, it isn't really a question. Can I just say to Emily that I found that very interesting. I personally don't feel in need of, of any uh, benefit assistant at the moment, but one never knows. And it was very useful to learn all about it because in conversation with other people, it might come up. One might be able to um, lead people to, in the right direction to get some extra help. So thank you, Emily. It was very clear. Oh, you're very welcome. And as I mentioned at the beginning, actually, that, you know, the RNIB helpline, um, I don't know whether that will be shared at some point after Mark's finished his section, but um, the advice team is available to support people in their individual circumstances and work out whether they can claim benefits and help them to claim them. Um, the helpline is available from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Monday to Friday and nine to one on a Saturday morning. So do you want me to give the helpline number out now or? Yes, please, I'll make yeah. a note. Yeah, so it's 0303. Yep. 123. Yep. 9999. Yep. Fabulous, thank you. That's okay. So yeah, if you give us a ring and anyone if you wanna ever find out whether you can claim any benefits.
particularly for those who may be in receipt of disability living allowance needing or wanting mm -hmm. to change over to yes. um, personal independence payment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of anxieties around, um, understandably, for, for people that are in those types of situations, for people that are in legacy benefits, so benefits that ha are being phased out by the government. So that, that includes disability living allowance or um, income related employment support allowance. But we will be at hand to support you. So contact us sooner rather than later if you are concerned or you want to check to see whether you should claim the newer benefits so hopefully now then emily if you're done we will uh ask mark to do his section yeah i'm gonna hang around for it though because i'm interested as well brilliant <laughs> yes more than welcome to stay fabulous okay, mark yeah Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm Mark anyway, I, I work at the RNIB uh, tax advice team. Um, a little bit of background on the on the, the uh, team that I work for. Uh, we're a small team, um, there's, there's four of us. Um, there's myself, there's um, my manager called Michael. Uh, we've got um, a lady who's part-time called Louise and we've got another full-time colleague who's called Steve. Uh, Steve has just recently uh, joined us from, uh, he used to work on the helpline, he's now working with us on the, uh, the RNIB uh, tax team. Um, so that's what we're, that's, that's who we are. Uh, we're funded by uh, HMRC themselves. So because we're funded by HMRC, um, we do get a lot of, you know, quite, quite good privileges from, from HMRC. A couple oh. of the things... No, sorry, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so a couple of the uh, a couple of the uh, the privileges that we've got, we've got access to two, two different services within within HMRC. Uh, so the first one, it's called the Needs Extra Support Team. So we can help people um, who basically says what it says on the tin. Really, they need a little bit of extra help and support um, to sort any anything out in regards to the the taxes. Uh, the waiting times are really really quite minimal. We could literally get somebody on the call on the phone call uh, within like a couple of minutes so what we would do when we're speaking to the the needs extra support team we'd put you on hold we'd bring through to the tax office for you um once we've got through to somebody as i say it's normally a couple of minutes we'll introduce you to the advisor and then we'll connect it in as like a sort of three-way conversation so we would support you with with, with that with that uh, with that query or whatever it is that you wanted to speak to hmrc about so we'd be on the call with you. Uh, so that's what, what we do um, in regards to uh, that sort of service. We do have access to another service as well. Uh, it's more for people who are unable to communicate over the phone. Uh, it tends to be people who use the other service. Um, it's more to do with people who, who probably have hearing loss as well as sight loss. Uh, people who have uh, things like dementia and um you know those, those, those sort of communication difficulties so that's kind of what the other service that, that we that we go down so when we need to speak to hmrc we'll either take you through yourself on the phone through the needs extra support team or if somebody was unable to do that what we would do is we'd send a consent form out and then we could sort everything out on, on the on the person's behalf um like i say through this other other department uh, the other department's called the, we call it the V Stars Department, but it starts. It's, it's short for Voluntary Sector Tax Resolution Service, so that's why we kind of shorten that down. Okay, so the main reasons why we would need to sort of speak to HMRC, uh, I can have say the bulk of the, my my work is done claiming the blind person's allowance. Uh, so the blind person's allowance is a way of reducing the amount of income tax that an individual would pay when they become registered as severely sight impaired stroke blind so that's what we would kind of do we'd help people with that um the way that the tax system works i'm going to try and keep this really really simple because tax is really boring it's you know it's not the most interesting subject so everybody in the country gets twelve and a half thousand pound tax free and when you earn above that that's what you get taxed on uh, so say you you've got an income of thirteen thousand pound a year uh, you you've gone five hundred pound over the threshold. 
So they're just it's just the five hundred pound that you're going to pay tax on. So that's kind of how that works, uh, the tax system. Uh, so for anybody that is registered to be sight impaired, uh, HMRC will increase that figure to fifteen thousand in um, by claiming the blind person's allowance. So uh, that's a good saving. Now it's kind of around about five hundred pound a year, uh, and again you would have to be registered severely sight impaired to claim that. Uh, if you were registered severely sight impaired or or blind, uh, you would be able to, and you weren't a taxpayer, you would be able to uh, transfer that to uh, a spouse or a civil partner. Uh, so as a couple, uh, you would end, end up um, obviously receiving the benefit, you know, as a couple. Uh, we, do, we do get quite a lot of people who have been registered, you know, severely sight impaired themselves. They're not paying any tax, so where we can transfer it to the husband or the wife or or whatever. So, like I say, you, you can still get the saving if, even if you're not paying any tax, providing that you're, you've been a marriage or a civil partnership. So that's kind of the blind person's allowance in, 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 a, in a nutshell. A uh, couple of other things with the, with, the, with the blind person's allowance. We can go back up, up to four years, depending on when you were registered um, as severely sight impaired. So like I say, so some, if somebody was registered in sort of 2017, we could go and backdate the claim to 2017 and uh, obviously get that. Uh, uh, any re any money that was owed would be, be refunded. Um, so that's kind of that we can do. Um, like I said, that's kind of like the bulk of, of our work really is these blind person's allowance claims. They are, like I say, uh, we, we do do quite a lot of them. And the, the phone call itself is really, really quite quite easy and simple. Uh, as I said to you before, the, uh, the needs extra support team that we get through to within HMRC, uh, they've all got um, training in, um, you know, in, in it's, it's to do with like, um, I'm trying to think the best way to describe it. It's more to do with, the, the service they offer is more to do with the quality of the phone call and, uh, um, rather than if you went through like sort of the, the normal channels, the normal helpline at HMRC. I think the advisors have got to take so many calls a minute and, and, and whatnot. So you get a, a more, you know, relaxed, unhurried uh, service. And like I said, the advisors do often ask for things like uh, preferred formats. You know, if you needed any um, correspondence sending out in large print, in audio or Braille or anything like that, they, they can sort that out for you as well. So they are really, really good, really understanding. And uh, they are sort of, you know, they do have a lot of training um, to, to help people. Um, so that's really good service that couple of the other things that we do deal with as well um there's something called the marriage allowance as well marriage tax allowance uh that works where you've got one person one person in a marriage or a civil partnership that's paying tax and one that isn't so again it's it's a sort of transferable benefit i touched on it before everybody gets this twelve and a half thousand pound from the government that's tax free if one of you if either yourself or your your spouse or civil partner is paying tax and you're not, you can transfer it to them. Again, that could be backdated up to four years as well. We do kind of, kind of get quite a lot of calls about that as well. Um, that kind of works out roughly around about £230 a year. And if you can be going back four years, you know, we do tend to get, you know, refunds up to in excess of £900 sometimes, you know, if we can go back the full four years. But again, it's, it's um, not going to dwell on it too much because everybody's sort of uh, situations are completely different. So um, like I say, it's just more about, you know, letting you know that that, that is something that is out there for people to claim. Uh, HMRC, <coughs> excuse me, has touched, I've said that there's, um, there's about 2 million people uh, not, not claiming that, that are eligible for it. So, um, so we just wanted to let people know about that. And the only, the only other thing about that is um, it's available for everybody born after uh, 6th of April 1935. So anybody born after 1935 can, can, can sort of get that. Uh, there is uh, another benefit, um, another uh, tax reduction called the married couples allowance. That's a bit more trickier, but that's for anybody that was born before the 6th of April 1935. Um, a couple of other things that we do advise on as well. Uh, we advise on VAT, uh, so uh, VAT reductions. Uh, the VAT section sort of gets split up into two bits. Um, there's uh, there's 
VAT on products. So if you're buying any, any products that are specifically designed for somebody with a disability in mind, um, you know, you wouldn't be expected to pay the VAT on that. So that covers things like, um, you know, like sort of things like those liquid liquid level indicators, you know, like talking watches, talking microwaves, you know, the, any magnification aids, you know, the sort of things that I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of getting at. So anything that's been specifically designed for somebody with a disability in mind, uh, that can be um, VAT exempt. Uh, and VAT at the minute is, uh, is currently 20%. Uh, it also covers building work as well. So any any building work or any any modifications to your home uh, that you need doing uh, that's in line with the disability, again that could be could be um, can be the work can be carried out VAT exempt. So it covers things like handrails, grab rails, ramps, like things like widening doorways, um, you know, making any modifications to any any rooms that you need, maybe even some extra lighting. Uh, it could cover even something like a bathroom, really. So say you've got a, uh, a bath in your bathroom and you're struggling to get in and out of it, uh, you can have the bath taken out, uh, a shower putting in or a wet room fitted, something like that. And the, and all the whole of the uh, the project would be uh, VAT exempt. That includes uh, the, uh, the the parts and the and the materials, the labour, and uh, what they call to make the area good again. So again, if you take a bath out, there's going to be missing tiling, missing flooring. All that can be replaced VAT exempt as well. So that that's kind of the, the VAT side of things. There is a little tricky thing with, with VAT in regards to um, things like Apple products and, you know, the, um, you know, like the Samsung, you know, tablets and things like that. You know, while they are really, really good for people with, with, with sight loss, you know, there's a lot of really, really good functions on there, a lot of accessible features. They haven't actually been designed for somebody with a disability in mind, it was found. They were just sort of put on there as, as sort of labor labor saving devices when it was when that piece of kit was invented. So that's things like uh, you know, like you say, you can uh, you can increase the text on an iPad, and uh, you know you can get the speech functions and all that. They were all designed, believe it or not, as as a labor saving device. It was it was only Apple got quite lucky in the fact that they actually thought, oh, I'm going to make we've got this product now. Actually, this is really good. You know, they kind of stumbled on it, so. It's a bit of a grey area with the Apple products and, like I said, the sort of Samsung tablets and things like that. We tend to tell people that it, it would be a no in, in regards to VAT on, on, on them. Um, like I said, that's kind of what we do deal with. We can help anybody using self-assessment as well. Uh, if anybody needs to complete a tax return, we can help with that. We can actually get help with filling the form in and we can actually get... Um, we've got a free service within within HMRC where they will fill it in for you and help you if you, if you do need a bit of extra help with, you, with the tax return. And then lastly as well, um, what we, we've been, this has been only a recent thing that we, we've found that we're more, get, taking more and more calls about. There's been a huge spike in, in scams. So I bet everybody on this call would have had a, a text or an email or some kind of phone call from somebody pretending to be from HMRC or the tax office. And the, then there's normally two ways with the scams. I'm probably not going to touch, uh, you know, too great difficulty. I think this is a session in itself. So be fair, but just be, be aware of anything that does come from someone pretending to be from the tax office. We tend to find that there's sort of two routes that the, uh, the scammers go down. There's like a, like a like a, a quite nasty route you know like if you don't pay this money back you'll you'll, you'll end up in jail or there's this kind of a, another route you know a, a nice route you know where they say oh you know we've made an error you, you've overpaid tax by 500 pound click on this link you know and you can claim it back we're awfully sorry you know there's kind of two routes that they do about that both are, both are re, you know obviously they're both telltale you know signs that there are there's a scam when HMRC contacts you, uh, whether it by text or whether it by email, they're really, really vague texts and vague emails. They will just say, 
um, we need to speak to you or there's been a change in your circumstance, please log on to your personal tax account. The personal tax account is the, the online service and, um, and and there'll be a message in your in your account. You know, it's kind of something like that. They will never, ever mention any figures. They will never put any links for you to click on, anything like that. It's all really, really quite vague, you know, when it comes to sort of scams, you know, on, on what the you know, what they send out. So that's just something just to bear in mind. I think we've already had, uh, we've had some, some um, you know, some, some some conversations, you know, we, we may do a, a follow-up session on on scams and just keeping yourself safe and things like that. So, uh, so yeah, so that's just something to think about. If it's come from HMRC, it'd be really, really vague and it wouldn't have any links or any figures on there. So just just be careful, okay, with, with, uh, with anything from uh, from that point of view. Um, so that was, like I say, a whistle-stop tour of um, of what we do. Um, like I say, again, it's, it's very, very difficult because, like I say, a bit like Emily, everybody's you know, you know, everybody's situation is different. So there's not, there's you know, there's no point really, you know, going into into vast amounts of depth. If, if anybody did want any um, a, any advice on maybe claiming any of the allowances, any advice on on VAT or anything like that. Um, we have got um, we've got a website which is just rnib.org.uk forward slash tax. There's a lot of good information on there, and also if you wanted to speak to us, uh, we've got a number as well. Um, what I might do, I might forward uh, one of our our fact sheets onto onto yourself, Jenny, if you want, and then you can maybe you know if anybody wants that, you know you can you may possibly forward that on. Fantastic. We'll share that yeah. with the rest of the team yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, fab. So that's it for me. Um, if anybody got any questions on on tax or anything that we, that uh, I've spoken about, yeah, um, I was just it was just puzzling me when you said I know a few a few people that have had wet rooms put in and things yeah. like that. Um, yeah. Does the uh, obviously those where it, where they are eligible to to claim the VAT back? Does yeah. the person have to pay all the VAT up at front and then they claim it back afterwards? Because you're going to have loads and loads of invoices. If you've had sure. uh, a wet room put in, you're going to have the plumber's yeah. bill, you can have the material yeah. bill, the sure. bill for the for the for the shower and things like yeah, that. You're going to have yeah. lots of little yeah. invoices, aren't you? Yeah, Jim? yeah. So what what it, what we what we tend to to, to see is um, what the way that you would go about it is you'd approach, you know, as you say, a plumber a builder, a tiler, and then you'd let them know, you know, you're having this work done and they just don't charge you the VAT. So obviously, you know, when they give you the invoice, they just don't add the, um, the VAT on. They will give you a, there is um, a little declaration form that, that, that you'd have to sign. Uh, and oh, then when yeah, they, like we yeah, had yeah, to yeah, sign when yeah, we bought yeah. a magnifier. Up. Exactly, exactly that, exactly that, yeah. So, and then what oh, right, then is right. when, when they, when they oh. submit the VAT returns, it covers the builder, uh, so there's no questions from HMRC. And then all they all that happens with, with yourselves is they just don't charge you the VAT. Um, it's just that it's a little bit tricky if you've already paid it. Um, that we do get a few calls like that, and then that that gets really messy. Uh, there's no uh, the builder's under no obligation to give you that VAT back once you've paid it. So it's always worth getting a, an agreement in place that they don't charge you the VAT. And most of these builders and, and like you say, plumbers and things like that, they would have done countless jobs like this. So they, they will have known know the situation. So that's kind of the way that you would do it. They just don't charge you the VAT on it. Oh, oh right. So, so that, that makes it a lot a lot simpler yeah. because I, yeah. I have seen instances, particularly yeah. on some of these sort of building programmes like Sarah Beanie does and things like yeah, that, yeah. where a property is actually being extended for the purpose mm -hmm. of somebody being a, having a disability. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are extending this house so that it is uh, uh, everything's downstairs, for example. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, they're, they're like I said, they're good examples of uh, you know modifications that's done to a home, uh, you know, in line with a disability. So yeah, you you hit the nail on the head with with, uh, with a couple of those examples. So yeah, great. Fantastic. Has anybody else got any questions? I have any. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because I uh, I pay tax, but I've he said blind people, but I'm not. I've got low vision. I've got macular degeneration. Okay. And, yeah. 
will I be able to I be eligible for tax relief? Because I pay tax because I get two pensions, sure. pension yeah. and company pension. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, what it is, you, um, you need to be registered severely sight impaired or blind. So if you're registered at uh, sight impaired, uh, unfortunately, you wouldn't qualify. It would be, okay. uh, they only give um, people who are registered severely or, or blind the, uh, okay. the allowance. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's so what if, I wanted to know. Okay, so me, if yeah. say six months' time you go back to the hospital and your registration changes and you get, up, yeah. you, it sounds really bad, doesn't it? You get an upgrade. <laughs> it's really sight impaired. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Is, is it a downgrade? Depending on your perspective of it, um, mm. then at that point you would contact um, the the team here with Mark and ask for some further advice from uh -huh. there would yeah. be because yeah. I do pay a lot of tax because I get two pensions you know yeah, yeah. that's what you get for working on <laughs> I worked for 23 years yeah yeah Good on you. yeah so it's um yeah exactly exactly what Jenny said there you know I mean obviously you know a lot of conditions you know a lot of site conditions you know unfortunately just the nature of them you know as you say things like you know macular degeneration in, in quite a lot of instances, you know, things do get a little bit worse, you know, down the line. So if anything did change with your registration, yeah, by all means, give us a ring back and we can uh, we can help you reclaiming that. So it's always worth, you know, every time that you go, uh, you know, probably discussing your registration with your, um, you know, with your ophthalmologist to see yeah. if they think that you're at that severe level or not. Um, uh -huh. And then obviously if, if you do become registered at severe level, you can come back to us and we can we can claim the blind person's law with you. Yeah, I hope not anyway. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's only around about £40 a month, you know, so I'm sure you'd yeah. rather have your sight the way it is than, than yep. get yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just wanted to ask that, did the double grazing and the stair leave, is it qualified for the reduction yeah. of the weird? Yeah, uh, a stair lift would be because a stair lift has been designed for somebody who sort of struggles to get up and down the stairs. So if you are having, you know, a stair lift installed or, you know, um, you know, you're thinking about that, that is, is, a, is a piece of equipment that, that helps people who are struggling with the mobility to get up and down stairs. So that would. In regard to, to windows and doors and things like that, um, everybody, every house needs windows and doors and things like that. Uh, so they're very, very tricky to to uh, to get the AT exempt. The only time that I've had um, Windows VAT exempt was uh, somebody had um, they needed some like tinted glass because the the windows were letting too much light in. So that was the only time I've ever really had anything to do with windows that's been VAT exempt. Uh, if it's just sort of normal double glazed windows, unfortunately, it would be a no. Uh, but the stir lift, um, yeah, um, you you would be um, VAT exempt on the stir lift. Yeah. How about the boiler? The new boiler? Yeah, again, a boiler. It, 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 a boiler is something you know that everybody sort of needs, unfortunately. So uh, again, you know, it's not been, it's not because of of a you know a, a disability such you know that you've needed a new boiler. Again, so unfortunately, uh, the boilers would be a no, I'm afraid, as well. All right. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, so, Thank no you. worries. It's been an absolutely amazing, informative mm -hmm. session this afternoon, guys. Yep. Emily and Mark, thank you so much. Um, we will let you go because you are extraordinarily busy. Um, certainly, I would say... Uh, because of lockdown as well that's, that's had a bigger impact on people trying to sort out monies and things as well yeah for sure um and things it's it's not a job i envy at all not having it's an absolute minefield trying to sort out um yeah. various different benefits and things yeah i'll agree with that i mean <laughs> i've i've um... I went on a universal credit uh, training session with Emily about, oh, I forgot, it, was, it, was, it was about, I don't know, it was about 18 months ago, probably even longer than that, probably two mm. years ago. And um, Emily walked out of there and knew what she was doing. And I walked out of that room and they may as well have been talking Chinese to me for, <laughs> for, 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 for eight hours, the, the whole eight hours. That sat there. I didn't have a clue what it was when I come out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's not easy at yeah. all. Yeah, so yeah, it's good.
Yeah. So like I say, we've got the specialist advice, you know, uh, you know, you don't need to sort of, uh, you know, worry about any of the ins and outs. It's just always just a case of just, you know, ringing up and checking and, and we can tell you, you know, if there's anything we can do, if there's not, you know, great, you know, then, you know, at least we know that you, you're getting everything you're entitled to. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all very much. Thank no you. problem. Thank Look you. Thank you. Take care. Emily. Thank you're you. Well.